All right, so moving on. That's the main, I'd say one of the main points. The second main point is you need to be able to use the explicit formula. Let me give you the recursive formula really quickly, but I'm not going to really bother about it too much. The recursive formula. Remember, the recursive formula just gives you the next one. The recursive formula gives you the next term. So to find the next term, think about it. To get to a sub n, to get to a sub n, I want to take the previous term, take the previous term, and we used to plus right here, guys. For arithmetic, you're plussing. What are we doing for geometric? What are we doing to get the next term? We're not plussing. What are we doing? We're multiplying. And we don't plus d, we don't multiply by d, we multiply by what? What do we call that letter now? R, R the common ratio. So just, it's really simple. It just says to get to the next one, take the previous one, multiply by R. To get to the next one, take the previous one, multiply by R. All right, so I'm not going to worry too much about this one. It's pretty self-explanatory. I want to talk about the explicit formula because this one's interesting. Where does this come from? <clears throat> a sub n equals a sub n equals and let me kind of come off to the side here let me do a little demo let's let's make a s s example sequence 2 6 18 54 162 2 6 18 54 162 all right, let's call this, this is a sub 1, a sub 2, let's call this guy a sub 3, a sub 4, we got a sub 5, etc., etc., etc. I want to come up with a formula that allows me to jump. Remember, explicit lets me jump to anywhere. So let me do a few concrete examples first. To get to a sub 3, to get to a sub 3, guys, I start with, again, the first term. I start with 2, but I'm not plussing it like last time. What am I doing again to get the next term? I'm times you. What do I times it by? I times it by 3. How many times do I times it by 3 to get to a sub 3? How many jumps is this? Exactly. It's going to be 2 jumps. So I'm going to multiply it by 3. Like that. 3 times 3. Right? Start with 2. Multiply by 3. Multiply by 3 again. I can rewrite that as 2 times 3 squared. Right? 2 times 3 squared. To get to a sub 4, to get to a sub 4 right here, a sub 4, how many jumps am I making, guys? Multiply by 3, multiply by 3. How many jumps is this? 3. So it's going to be 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. In other words, 2 times uh, 3 cubed. And to get to a sub 5, what do you guys think? How many jumps does it take to get to a sub 5? four jumps. A sub 5 equals 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. In other words, 2 times 3 to the fourth power. We're ready now, once you've copied that down, to figure out the formula, because that's all it is. That's all it is. So, A sub n equals A sub 1 times, A sub 1, not plus, times, what do we call this 3 again, guys? It's our common what? It's our common R, common ratio. So R, and the question is, how many times do you multiply by R? The total number you want to jump to, to get to A sub 3, how many times did we jump, guys? 2. To get to A sub 4, how many times did we jump? 3. To get to A sub 5, how many times did we jump? 4. So to get to A sub N, we don't want to jump N times, we want to jump N minus 1. Fantastic. That is the formula. Very similar, except we're multiplying. So it's like repeated multiplication. That's why it's an exponent up here. So let's uh, march forward. We've only got a couple more examples. Let's write the explicit formula. Let's write the explicit formula. And we're going to find... Uh, let's find a sub 5. Find a sub 5. Okay, let me give you a few details here. A sub 1 is 1024 and R is 0.5. Okay, A sub 1 is 1024, R is 0.5. So let's use our formula here. So A sub 5 equals 
a sub 1, right? a sub 1, or a sub 1 is right here, 1024, 1024 times, what is our r? It's given to me, what is it? 0 0.5 or half. It's like a half life, right? You keep halving it, halving it, halving it. How many times, ladies and gentlemen, if I want to get to a sub 5, how many times do I half it? You half it four times. Half it, half it, half it, half it. It's almost like a half-life problem. And you just do this on your calculator. Just do this exponent first, multiply by 1024. I'm just going to give you the answer. It's 64. Just keep halving it. You could try that if you got one in front of you. Okay, let's just do one more of these before we wrap it up. A sub 6. Uh, find A sub 6, please. Oops. Find. <laughs> Backwards. Find A sub 6. Uh, a sub 1 is uh, 3, and R is 2. Let me just give you a really simple example so you don't need a calculator. All right, everyone go ahead and do that. Find A sub 6. Okay, let's check it out. So A sub 6 equals A sub 1, which is 3, times R, which is 2. Ladies and gentlemen, if I want to jump to term 6, how many times do I multiply by 2? 2 to what power? The fifth power, exactly. N minus 1. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 32 times 3, or 3 times 32, which is 96. 96. Very good. All right, we're going to finish up with a very uh, kind of quick concept here, the geometric mean. Stick with it for one more problem. The geometric mean. Okay. To find the geometric mean, so remember, sorry, the arithmetic mean, the arithmetic mean, remember this from before, you add, then divide by 2, right? That was what we did before. You add, and then you divide by 2. That was before. That was the arithmetic series. For a geometric series, the geometric mean, instead of adding, what do you guys think we're going to do here? We're going to multiply, okay? The next step is not so obvious. Instead of dividing, anybody want to take a guess at what we do? Square root. Good. Yeah, that's not so obvious. Multiply then square root. That's the geometric mean. That'll let you find any missing pieces. So if we finish today with this problem, let's say you got a sub n is a mystery. You want to find a sub n. a sub n plus 1 is 80. a sub n minus 1 is 20. You know it's a geometric sequence. Just take the geometric mean. Take the geometric, excuse me, mean. So a sub n equals 20 times 80, right? Multiply 20 times 80. Take the square root. So that's the square root of 2 times 8 is 16. Add two zeros afterwards. That's going to be plus or minus what number? 40. The reason it's plus or minus, and that's kind of confusing, if it's a plus version, guys, if it's the plus version, what is my r here? What am I multiplying by? What are you multiplying by to get from here to here? 2. If it's the negative version, what are you multiplying by? Negative 2. Okay? So you have a couple of those geometric mean, just multiply, take the square roots.